Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a look at the beta release of LMDE7. This is Linux Mint Debian Edition. So the project behind this is in the event the Ubuntu package base becomes either completely corrupted or goes away or has some major fundamental problem that the Linux Mint team can switch Linux Mint over to a Debian base. This has with it some very positives, uh, very good positives in the stability of Debian, the uh, increase that Debian has with compatibility and still keeping on to that really rock solid base there. Obviously the downside is being based on Debian instead of Ubuntu packages will move quite a bit slower and there is a few compatibility issues that you find because Ubuntu has some proprietary drivers and, and tools set up which Debian does not. LMDE at some level bridges that a little bit but at the same time with this new release of Debian 13 we really don't need that as much anymore. Meaning that the gap between LMDE and the regular Linux Mint project is getting a little bit smaller. There are still a few things missing like specific driver management and things like that. Debian partially mitigated that in the um, in Debian 12 by splitting out the proprietary software from the proprietary drivers allowing you to run proprietary drivers without proprietary software. So all those are kind of fixed. Outside of those, though, this release is not a major, major uh, deal. Is There's nothing huge in this. Mostly it is porting all of the things from the latest uh, additions in Linux Mint 22.3 out to 22.2, whatever we're on around, 22.2, sorry, uh, up into that. So just having a look at the uh, monthly news, which we usually cover these, but I did not cover it um, this month. Uh, but in September 12th, we had information about LMDE 7. Uh, the first major goal is the Debian 13 package base upgrading from the Debian 12. All of those improvements from Linux Mint 22.2, which we'll cover briefly, and we will have support for OEM installations. That is really good news for people that are setting up computers for people that uh, you want them to be able to run through that initial setup process. You can install it in OEM mode, make any modifications, ship it on out to them, and let them set their own passwords and things like that on the first setup. So that is what this brings. It does bring the improvements came with 22.2, uh, the libedwita changes to lib, um, libedwita 1.7, applying the patches, uh, basically fixing some of that compatibility. We are, however, losing some 32-bit support because Debian 13 drops 32-bit support in some instances. So LMDE 7 for maximum compatibility will just kind of ship with just the 64-bit. And uh, that's kind of what we uh, what we see as far as the release. Again, the the release announcement itself, uh, obviously, as typical, the beta uh, this beta has some some bugs in it. It will be up possible to upgrade from the beta to the stable release. So if you're testing this and you wanted to uh, bring it to the the full stable when it's released. And they will provide instructions as to how they are going to do that. As far as the release notes itself, once again, you'll notice it is extraordinarily bare bones because there's not a ton in here that is radically different. Uh, obviously, since we're going to be testing this on a virtual machine today instead of in real hardware, we may have to run through the VirtualBox guest editions. So we'll go ahead and run through that step since we haven't done it in a long time. Uh, but let's go ahead and have a look at what the installation looks like. I set my virtual machine up over here. We've given it six gigs of RAM. I've given it, I've maxed out the video memory at 256. And I've already dropped my ISO inside of the drive. So let's go ahead and uh, start this guy up and make sure it works. And I haven't tried this yet. So uh, we are uh, running cold here. So here's LMDE, LMDE in compatibility mode. And here's your OEM install. That's going to be new in the LMDE branch. Hardware detection, you can boot from the local drive, things like that. So let's go ahead and start LMDE. All right, so we have landed on the desktop here, and uh, I was able to get it full screen without any guest editions for now. Uh, this is just on the live disk, so we'll go ahead and run through the installation process. So we'll go ahead and run through all this. So hit the Let's Go button. We're going to start by selecting our language and our time zone. So it auto selects New York, which is fine by me. Here's our keyboard selection. And I'm going to call this guy LMDE7. We'll just call it LMDE. 
and LMDE, and then I'm going to give it a super secret password that's definitely not 123. So here is uh, the automated installation. We'll erase the disk and install LMDE on it, and I can choose which disk I use for that. So in this case, I only have one available disk, that being the virtual disk we have in here. And I can use LVM, I can encrypt it, and I can fill the disk with random data. This option here is a secure deletion. However, it will be very slow. Uh, I'm not going to bother with encrypting it, but that's how easy it is. Hit this and then hit your decryption pass key. And then when you turn your computer on, you will have to decrypt the drive before it boots into the operating system. And then you'll have to log in again. You can also do the manual partitioning. We are not going to walk through that step for now. So this will delete all the data on this drive. Do you want to proceed? And the answer is yes, we do. So now we can choose where we are installing the Grub boot menu. We're going to keep it at the default. Uh, only change that if you know what you are doing. You can actually not install it if you are using a different hard drive to run your Grub menu. So here it gives us a summary of everything that is going on. And we will hit our installation. And this will take a few minutes to install, so we'll come back to the video when this is done. All right, so the installation is complete. Would you like to restart? Yes, we will restart. Hit enter to boot that out. Here we have our LMDE7, and then the advanced options, of course, are going to be our recovery modes. And you'll see more kernels in there as you update the system. So hit escape to go back. We're going to go ahead and boot this up. So here we're going to log in. Now uh, this one here, we do have that default uh, or the the default X in the experimental Wayland. So if you are looking for uh, for that Wayland, uh, you can go ahead and start testing it over here. I think that might have already landed on LMDE six uh, because that came with Cinnamon a couple versions ago. But uh, this one here will have that in there as well. And uh, the first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and right click over here and change the display settings. And let me see if I can uh, put the full screen there. Okay, so full screen is good. Now the question is, do we want to install those guest additions? Do we need those or not? And uh, I said I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that just in case you are running virtual machines and need to. It's a fairly simple process. Come down here to devices and insert guest editions CD image. We're going to have to download that. So I'm getting this error downloading the guest editions. And so I just uh, took the virtual machine version, which I found over here and hit. A, oh, no, not that. Hit this here, and I need this version number, 7016. Did a basic search for VBox Guest Edition 7016. Manually downloaded the file there. So that now that we have downloaded that file, now I would need to go into Optical Drive and choose a disk file. And that should be under Downloads. Here is our VirtualBox Guest Editions. Let me go back to full screen that. And now that we have installed it, we're going to go ahead and hit the run button, give it our super secret password. And this is going to copy the virtual machine guest edition. So it should be as easy as hitting that device menu and downloading, but for whatever reason, it was not working. And so, hey, we had to go the long way around and just tell you how to um, do that manually. So that's good. That's all right. So let's go ahead and reboot the system. There we are. Now we are back to the desktop. And let's just have a look at the brief welcome screen. Nothing in here should have changed. Uh, we have our desktop colors. So we'll keep the theming. I'll, I'll change it. Let's go the there's an orange black. Let's do there's like a, a two toned blue and gray. We'll go ahead and keep that two toned blue and gray there for our basic themes. You can do your system snapshots. Now, LMDE does not have the multimedia codecs uh, installed by default, so you will need to click that button. Uh, Ubuntu installs those, or at least uh, the, the option to install those is in the installer, uh, just because the how they are packaging everything. Since Debian does not include those, they have a separate package to include all of your multimedia codecs. So you do have to hit that button there. Do you want to install these these are going to allow you to do multimedia mp4s mp3s things like that uh, more smoothly 
uh, if at all. So we just have to hit the install button there and uh, uh, download those packages, and then we'll go ahead and get those installed. That is one of the steps that's a little bit different on LMDE versus uh, the Linux Mint Ubuntu uh, edition. And then everything else is going to be the same that you have, are used to in Linux Mint. Once that's done, we'll have a look at our software installer. All right, so now you can see we have software updates. We need to update the update manager. Go ahead and run that. And then this will give us a list of all of the software that has been updated in the last four days. So while that's downloading the updates, we'll just kind of take a tour of what's here already. So you see that it's very much like the standard Linux Mint. Uh, in fact, if I were to give you this and you're used to Linux Mint, you may not actually notice a difference. There is really only one software package that uh, the Ubuntu version has that this one does not. And that is there is no specific driver manager. Uh, whereas the Ubuntu system has a driver manager, this one does not. However, the de new modern Debian does a really good job with drivers as it is. It's becoming less and less important, especially since the kernels that they ship in, uh, even in this version, are a little bit newer. And you have the option for some of the newer kernels as well, meaning it's not nearly as critical to have the Ubuntu version versus the LMDE version. Just kind of why I said if I have to, uh, if I have to go back and um, uh, reinstall my whole system, I might actually go to an LMDE version. Now, the other thing you'll see missing here is that there is no kernel manager inside of here. Uh, usually in the Ubuntu version, you can manage the kernels. So you would have to follow instructions on uh, Debian for changing the kernel if you want to do so. Uh, but other than that, uh, for the average end user, there's not going to be a lot of differences between LMDE Debian versus LMDE Ubuntu. And uh, the question is, which one should you go with? I think overall, you're going to have a lot more uh, a lot more compatibility on more hardware by using the Ubuntu version. You can run that driver manager in the event you have some edge drivers, or you can change the Linux kernel between the different ones that you want much more easily in the GUI tools out of the box. However, the Debian has going with it, particularly if you're not a person that wants to update a lot or you're not a fan of all of the new features, if you like your computer just being exactly what it is when you installed it and not really having any surprises on updates, you will actually have a better overall experience on LMDE than Ubuntu since it doesn't push the, uh, the new software versions as much. A little bit, but not as much. Again, though, the downside is some people, you know, some software changes really, really fast and some software you want to get the newest versions. And so it's something that you really have to weigh as you are examining the uh, the offerings. Overall, though, this might actually more suit my needs as long as I can test it and everything would work then uh, I would probably run this. I'd want to do a couple more small tests. But for the most part, I think LMDE is an excellent uh, uh, addition. And uh, you can see here that uh, out of the box, this guy just, it it is, uh, it looks about the same. It behaves about the same. Um, overall, you're not going to notice a lot of major differences. So I would encourage you to have a look at um uh, LMDE if you're considering switching away from that Windows which is about to expire or maybe you just say you know what I just like the Ubuntu version stick with that uh, overall it doesn't really matter which one of those you happen to pick you're gonna probably have a good experience either way so there's our uh, video here let me know your thoughts about LMDE your experience with it in the comments down below